We have a 58 year old male with a past medical history of obesity and smoking, had prior history of Barrett's esophagus with high grade dysplasia. This patient was treated with endoscopic mucosal resection and then radiofrequency ablation uh, by my colleagues and friends at University of Chicago. The patient then moved, ended up developing a recurrence, got a repeat treatment when living in Ohio with, uh, at Cleveland Clinic with radiofrequency ablation, got lost to follow up. Uh, called back to them after he moved to Indiana, and then they called over and uh, was asked to be seen by myself for a consideration of repeat assessment and possible treatment. A normal CT of his chest. He has known very poor esophageal motility, which is probably why he had recurrence. He has poor esophageal motility. He has obesity and reflux. So with poor control of his reflux and a high acid state, he's getting recurrence of this disease. High-grade dysplasia is now considered carcinoma in situ, and all your oncology friends will be able to tell you that this is, you know, essentially carcinoma in situ for a very deadly cancer. Esophageal cancer has a 19.5% survival at five years, and now we have this carcinoma in situ. It, it would make sense to want to be very aggressive in treatment for this, this individual. This is referred for long segment appearance with high grade dysplasia. We performed an upper endoscopy to assess his disease. He's shown to have flat, uh, flat disease with multifocal high grade dysplasia with islands of neosquamous epithelium. He's got four to five centimeter hiatal hernia as well. And that's again, why he's probably having reflux. This large patchless hiatal hernia is leading to uh, recurrent disease and recurrence of his high grade dysplasia. So we need to come up with a treatment plan for this individual. What's the next step? Number one, hiatal hernia repair. This was considered. The patient has a very poor motility, um, and it was thought that despite hiatal hernia repair, we'd need some sort of a fundification. Number two, uh, upper endoscopy with radiofrequency ablation in this individual who's had two different attempts at radiofrequency ablation against recurrent disease. Upper endoscopy with endoscopic mucosal resection. Again, he's got a fairly long segment of disease, limited nodularity. And then finally, maximize his PPI therapy. Uh, do an end upper endoscopy and do cryoablation. So here's a really nice article that takes a look at from GIE at salvage cryoablation after failed RFA for Barrett's esophagus and looking at its effectiveness as well as its safety. And Doug Plaska was kind of the senior author on, on this whole study. Essentially, their conclusion after looking at 121 patients who underwent RFA for Barrett's esophagus with dysplasia, and you can see about over half of these had high grade dysplasia, like our gentleman here. Um, they looked at the efficacy of total eradication for these patients using spray cryotherapy, and they found essentially in their conclusion that patients with refractory dysplasia or recurrent dysplasia after radiofrequency ablation salvage cryotherapy is safe and effective. And that's what we gave this gentleman. I follow this gentleman to this day. He's been eradicated uh, from his high-grade dysplasia. He's had um, good maintenance of eradication and is doing quite well. So this is a great example of how cryospray may be used as salvage ablation for those individuals with failed RFA.